watching the clock, 10,000 hours go by. I keep putting in work, the tears are filling my eyes. I swear I've never been tested like this, but this is mine. It's not a matter of chance, just a matter of time. Never look back. If something standing in my way, I always push back. If something seemed impossible, I never took that. Nah, cause now I know better. Can't stop, won't stop, I won't quit ever. Welcome back guys to the LCK, welcome back to the Telecom War because after that game one, we're going to talk to Abito and Dikon Dangun and see what they feel uh, about that uh, game one because uh, it seemed as if it uh, could have been a very close matchup but SKT taking the horn and really just pushing forward uh, for a very nice win in that game number one. And of course the uh, Telecom win, uh, War does mean a lot uh, for these two teams and for a lot of fans as well. So. We yeah, got to see a very good first rendition of that first match and we're going to see how that goes with um, that second game. But for the first game, it really has been about kind of the development of SK Telecom that has been you know, growing and getting better as the season went on. And, and now we're at the stage where SK Telecom in that game number one looked very, very good and a convincing win uh, over KT Rolster in game number one. We'll see how they did it. Uh, through some of the highlights uh, for how we did it. Mean, so the first Baron fight was right around the, the earlier parts of these fights here. The right, Rise was really having a hard time getting caught up in that trap and uh, getting damaged down for the first part of this fight already. It just feels as if, you know, SK Telecom was trying to uh, get into this fight and try to get something going, but ended up uh, almost losing Faker, but in the end losing um, Tall in the mix as well. So uh, there was a lot of things that SK Telecom could have done a little bit better, but a little bit wobbly uh, in that first fight around the Baron Pit. Uh, really went to show that Kate Rolls were definitely focused for the opportunity that were given to them. Uh, taking the most advantage out of that one. So it was very nice for them in the first part of that game number one. But we also get to see another highlight where uh, something that was a little bit different. This was Faker, obviously. This is right before this. There's a lot of time uh, being spent by Faker surviving through that chase where everybody from KT Rolls was trying to uh, just catch out Faker. It's all of them at the same time, but Faker buying a lot of time. I uh, really went for that uh, mid tower and uh, getting that turret and really went for it very, very nicely there. And uh, and we just don't know, you know, if SK Telecom made a different decision, what would have happened for that game, but a little bit of opinion. I made it is uh, not going for the Baron at that instance while Faker is being chased was actually the better way through because before Ryze was able to be respawned back into uh, back to the rift, it, mean, it meant that KT Rolls probably would have had them outnumbered for most of that encounter. So a good of SKT to go for that mid lane uh, turret for that first turret uh, of them in that mid lane, but still uh, got that advantage where they could and uh, still putting a lot of time for Faker uh, to make sure he survives for the longest of time. But we actually saw, you know, Caitlyn following up with a, a turret push of uh, uh, Def's uh, own, and we saw that, you know, trying to even out, obviously with the terms of objectives, and we thought that KT Roaster would uh, get closer back into this game. But we actually saw this very many times in previous renditions. But whenever the vision was really just outwarded, and even with that, Scoto Crab already uh, being grabbed by uh, KT Rolls to, to get that vision right around the Baron pit. No way to tell that a Baron will have been started, but only a thought and only a kind of an expectation from KT Rolls here. Maybe they're going for this, and by the time that's done that, it's a little bit too late, and Baron was already taken and gets out very, very easily for the entire side of SK, SK Telecom. And 
meant that KT Rollster first took that big hit uh, from that maybe the first time in that game number one, and and that all really just took to an eventual loss for KT Rollster at game number one. Of course, uh, after that play, it became the very important thing where the last team fight uh, did result uh, in a very nice win for SK Telecom in that game number one. And of course, the macro play was the biggest thing. Uh, that was the biggest thing. But you know, let's get to the community reactions, what the fans had to say about that. The Rise Ultimate, 200% utilization. So making the best use out of that Rise Ult is something you can always count Faker to do, even at his worst moments. But uh, a good moment like this today. He's looking very good and looking very good for everything. And Tal looking good as well. We're going to see what uh, Bito has to say for that one line summary. Of course, we saw a very traditional composition for both teams uh, today. And it feels as if uh, the first time, first timers for the summer viewers. And this is something that what's it is, and this is this is League of Legends is what's been summarized. So going back to the old days and trying to bring, uh, bring it back to the present. And we'll see if that continues in game number two as that's going to conclude out the post-match analysis and going to hand it back to you guys. Thank you very much, Joel. Thank you so much for the translation. As per usual, let's find out the MVP. See who's going to take it. It's going to be that man in the mid lane. Two, one, and three on for Faker, but that doesn't matter at all. It was the Realm Warps one after the other, and the game was over. A tale of two Realm Warps for certain. <laughs> there was one before that was conspicuously not the best, and we said, oh, didn't even bring the minions. What's he going to do? Then yeah. he wins the game shortly afterwards. Such as Faker and quietly having a big season. 600 MVP points, six MVPs for him. Look at this amazing play. They clear a ward, they realm warp, and Katie says, oh crap, we lost Baron. Yeah, they did. Even if they did manage to see them, there were pings all over it. That ward was killed. But when you've got three items on your Ezreal and your Ryze, you're not going to have your Baron last very long. It was taken by the Trundle very easily. From that point on, you I mean KT, it was all desperation from here. They tried to get the fights that they were looking for. Have a look at Tal's uh, Ornhorn. It's a pretty high value one at this particular stage. Let's watch it here. How many does he get? He gets the simple five. The casual five. You've got to say, KT didn't have to fight here. It was against Baron. They had good scaling. I think their team fight outscales pretty hard. But, uh, you know, the KT way is to go forward, to go forward. And this time, into their doom. The game ended from this play. SK Telecom, two realm warps later, pick up a casual game one win. And there's the casual smug smile on Faker's face as well. We haven't seen that one. I've missed it. <laughs> he caught himself. You can see now it's just the, you know, the just, just stare, at, stare at the screen. It's all going to be fine. But this is what you guys are all waiting for. Smeb is definitely coming back in for game number two. I don't think it would necessarily change it. We were having that discussion and Papa, you just told me straight up. Don't think the game would have changed very much if it was Smeb on the top side of the map, but I have a feeling that everyone at home wants their Smeb to be back in their KT. And look, it's one of those things where I still think Smeb coming in for game number two was a set piece thing. I think they just wanted to give King in a game. I've seen Smeb roll up on Cho'Gath and die to ganks. Does it on Rumble, oh, yeah. does it on Cho'Gath. Mara, never forget. <laughs> but in this particular game, I think you have to run Smeb second. He is the better top laner. He's definitely going to be feeling at the captain's back for game number two. Yep, and we're back into Champion Select as well. Game number two could not have come any sooner. I want to see whether SKT have got more plans now on the blue side to show us as we go into game two of the Telecom War. And already, Morgana are going to be banned away on SKT's side this time. That's the boring one for you to talk about. Why don't you talk about the fact, Atlas, that Swain Whoa, red was side banned Swain ban? on the red side. So that means the chance of some interesting picks. Look at Bengi. He's like, what the hell? Did they <laughs> miss ban? Yeah, he's pretty confused now. And they, now they're saying, wait, do we have to ban Talia? Are we going to let them get both of them? Nocturne's going to be banned away, and it looks like SKT. They want to be able to take one of the power picks. They're not going to trade. I just like when the script is flipped and people are like, wait, we don't know, we don't know how to play that. Ah! And they just have to ban away things. So Nocturne will be taken. Predictably, Aatrox will be the second ban because he is uh, in a very privileged scenario of being incredibly broken. So... No sign of him. What about the Talia now, SKT? Yeah. How many of the bans do you get on blue side if you have to ban Nocturne and Talia? Well, Pike and Gallio were both banned in game number one by KT on the blue side. This time it's going to be Zoe taken away. And KT now have to wonder whether or not they have to ban the Talia. And they are going to. Still thinking that Talia Nocturne and the Aatrox are the highest priority. So have to fit them into the bands at some point, but that gives SKT the Galio. 
if they would like it. First pick would be a bit of a reach, but of course a lot of fans at home will say they've won their game 6-1 and one on this pick, including Rift Rivals. Why not? Yep. If you take a first round Galio, there isn't really a lot of champions that dunk him in lane. And that's kind of the issue right now, is that he can get through basically any lane. I'm excited to see what Yukar wants to take, because it's very bold to first pick Galio on blue side. KT can look to a lot of different directions. Seems like they may actually be taking away Blank's Trundle. And Blank's Trundle has looked very good, so I don't mind it being taken away by KT Ross. Yeah, it was 3-1 and one when they came into this series. Now 4-1 and one after his last victory. Now, KT, what are you going to pick up alongside it? I think Ezreal could be a consideration here. It's exactly what SKT picked in the first game. And, and Deft is, of course, a fantastic Ezreal player. It means that he wouldn't have to play something like the Caitlyn. But Rakan was left up. Of course, slipped through picks and bans completely in game number one. Would SKT be so bold to go for the Camille here and potentially flex it between Tal and Blank? Blank has played the Camille this season 1-0 and on the pick, and that was at Rift Rivals, where they did run Galio Camille, so we'll wait and see. They want to do that, but the Rakan and Denial to have another clean initiator, another clean bastion for that hero's entrance to set up some big engage. SKT, they do have access to Pike this time, but not the Morgana to make Pike look extra broken. They will take it anyway. Effort on Pike has been a very nice pick for him. Yeah. Now, SKT, do they have to pick Blank's champion here? Of course, his most played is the Sejuani, is available. 50% win rate isn't exactly anything to write home about. And uh, he did look pretty poor on that one in their most recent loss against MVP. That's However, he doesn't have the most expansive, effective champion pool at the moment. Now, this would be a bot lane Vladimir, most likely. Tal could take it in top side. Bang played this at Rift Rivals, and there was that moment where he got a lot of kills in the early game. Looked a lot more practiced yeah. on the Vlad. But they ended up losing that game to Invictus Gaming. The 4-0-5 losing game from Bang. He played really well. He so did. In a different game where they didn't make that game losing play around Baron, he could have potentially popped off even further. So we'll see if that is bot lane for SKT. KT, do they just take Zaya here and... Zyra like Rakan makes sense. is likely to be a bot lane duo. With Trundle, he can flex around. There's an outside chance it's a funnel, but heavy expectation this will just be Zaya Rakan as a bot lane duo for the first time in a while. Yeah. Of course, still very, very powerful, but is it going to be able to stand up against the awesome dudes on the side of SKT? We'll still have to find out. First ban taking a little while as Darius is going to be the decision from KT, probably looking towards something like Amundo with that ban. Meb is 4-0 on the Mundo. We all know that Mundo's had some great games. Mundo also looks at anything that's not a marksman and usually laughs in their face. So Mundo would be a pretty clean draft if they want it. Yeah, and look at this. Yukao getting some respect for his Yasuo. That Seen would... that into Galio before. Remember, Mundo would also allow for a last pick mid laner, which would be yeah. what Faker was able to do in the previous game. Now, they already know it's almost 100% against Galio, but there still is reasons to go for a riskier champion as a fifth pick and to shroud the secrecy as they double ban champions that lane against Mundo. Yep, that is probably the most quintessential rumble bans that you can possibly get towards. Hey, Cannon still something available is, yeah, rumble. Rumble, Coming Cannon, Mundo, those are the champions we're thinking about when it comes to top laners would be a blind pick and then Yukal's pick last in that scenario. I like how you just list champions K uh, Smeb's very good at yeah. as well as Jace is going to be the ban, yet another one that Smev is very good at, but now he has pick of the litter, and without a GP or a Darius, Mundo is standing out like the sorest of thumbs. If it's going to be a riskier choice, could potentially leave it to last, but you imagine that Yukal be looking to something. Would he consider the Velkos in this scenario? That's what we usually see against a lot of these more mid-range champions. The Malzahar would be a visit to Crown Town. Yeah, that's the, uh, the other look at how to deal with the Galio in the mid lane, and SKT, they can pick the Mundo if they like, but they'll have to pick it into a potential Smebs cannon. Malzahar, a old favorite into Galio, like you mentioned, Atlas, can actually do some damage to him. And it sometimes has kill pressure in the mid lane on a Galio. Not many champions have that, but he's already against Vladimir Galio that could potentially start the dunking. And speaking of dunking, there's going to be a Gragas here as well to potentially ping pong around the Malzahar. The moment is passive is down. Can be something that blank can go back to as well. Certainly was something that he played in the past and played to pretty good effect. Of course, Gragas was described affectionately by my old friend, Jake Spawn Tiberi, as the goodly sin. 
And uh, Blank, pretty damn good at Lee Sin in his day. It's dangerous to talk about Lee Sin when Rush is on the bench. So <laughs> we'll just leave that topic to one side and zoom in on which of Smeb's champions is he going to visit here? Will it be quintessential Smeb or will it be something new? He's laning against the Gnar. And they've picked a champion that lanes well into Mundo and not actually gone for the Mundo, which is interesting. Still wants to play a tank, though, by the looks of things. Oh, it's cannon time. Oh, I hope so. It's definitely cannon time. Just trying to match that range on the top side. We've got midgets up there, but one of them goes real big sometimes. And Cannon, that's going to be locked in. Cannon AP and AD always seen as a good matchup, but AP Cannon, I think, is coming out. Smep 2-0 on the pick. One of the best flanking teleporters of all time. A treat to see it and a good matchup for the Ken. Yeah, I find it so interesting that the Mundo fell all the way through pick and ban. Well, you're not picking it into the Gnar, so that makes sense. And the Gnar oh, is yeah. there for another threat onto the Malzahar and the Zaya. I'm excited because it's opened up the cannon, and Smeb's cannon, we all remember that huge engage at Worlds 2016 that was one of the highlights of that tournament. He's always been good on this, he's always on his teleports, but I'm interested in the mid lane here. The Malzahar can work well against the Galio, but he needs to start getting the work done early because I feel like the reliability of this Malzahar as the game goes on can only go down against so many different ways to disrupt his passive. And also, SKT's pile on teamfight is disgusting. Yep. And they can disengage it whenever they want with Blank. They probably won't want to, though, as they put Hemo Plague down, they gnar people into the walls, and then X marks the spot over and over and over until KT's dead. And things like Magic Resist aren't really going to be relevant because it's a squishy lineup from KT. There's not that many yeah. people that will itemize into true Magic Resist. A Banshee Veil on the Malzahar might be considered, but no true Magic Resist stacking tanks means that SKT don't necessarily have as many damage fall-off issues as other comps might. Yeah, and also the Gnar is going to be building a fair bit of damage, most likely as well, trying to go up against this cannon. We'll see what the item choices are going to be, whether we see Rageblade Gnar once again, of course, has a lot of flexibility with what he is going to build. Against cannon, I think you have to be a lot more respectful. The Rageblade into the Mundo for sure, but this is a losing matchup for the Gnar. Unless the jungle help is big, let's see how the blank Gragas goes, because it's a bit of a turn away from the trundle. Yeah, it was what he got destroyed on yep. against Yondu earlier in the week. And now SKT trying to run it back. Looking for the 2-0 this time against KT Rolls to game two of the Telecom War. Let's get into it. It's good to hear the seven KT fans that made it into the uh, Soli Stadium today actually raised their voices. There's uh, certainly so many SKT fans in here. It is a packed house. Ooh. As We found one. And Deft at the front. As you can see, zoom in on that man on your screen. We'll see how the lovers are going to do on the bottom side of the map. Deft and Marta, of course, playing very well together. And now we'll have to certainly continue doing that. Let's look at something new. Deft is innovating in terms of starting item on a Zaya. Wow. First time I've ever seen Corrupting Potion first on the Zaya. Now, the reason for this actually multi-level is let's first zoom in on the fact that there's a sweeper level one to stop the jungle pathing being as easily spotted for blank. But the Corrupting Potion is here because let's think about what you buy when you're facing a Vladimir. You want to buy a Vamp Scepter. You want to buy a Sheen if you're Ezreal to try to trade with the awesome dude because you can't just go for your normal items. You get out-traded, and of course, a Vladimir gets free sustain on his Q. Because you don't want to go for either of those early onto the Zaya, he's going Corrupting Potion and then trying to go for a normal build, a Storm Razor most likely. So that means his first item is the Corrupting Potion to find that little bit of sustain. Yeah. Well, we'll see whether it works out here as he moves into the lane first off. Bang and effort playing pretty respectfully level one, but we'll see how this develops over time. We know that once effort gets a few more of his buttons available to him, things could get rough. This mid lane certainly going to be the most non-interactive one as the midgets on the top side. We'll see how this battle is going to go. Nah versus Cannon is something we haven't seen for quite some time. Smabs Cannon, 11 and three. Again, legendary pick for him. Pushing up here, the extra mana sustain will mean that Deft can push and use his abilities a little bit more wantonly, but I don't think that's the big reason for the Corrupting Potion. A lot of people would have considered the Doran Shield, but Deft more about the on-command use of the potion here on the side. Yeah, he's going to pop it now. He took a little bit of harassment, probably mostly from the minion wave. 
been trying to harass down Bang and Everett as much as possible here in this lane. Well, early on, it is Faker with the ability to shove in the Malzahar, but after a certain point, it will mean that the Malz will be able to instant clear waves as much as he wants. And so Ira Khan going to have control of the bot side before some levels come in and some threat comes out of effort. The cannon's going to push, but of course, pushing can sometimes come as a price. Seems like Santa wants to bring another present for the SKT fans right now, setting up around top. Yeah, this map able to get Tal relatively low. 300 health currently on the Nars. That's a big minion wave for the level 3 Gragas to contend with. Right, been waiting for his body slam cooldown for a little while now. Just looking for an angle, but this map not opening one. Very hard to kill the cannon. It's a smart call here wow. by the side of KT. They are into it. Exactly what to expect. Great top lane of sense from Smab. Needs the Drake has started, but effort poking around. Yeah. This is a deep water dive in order to go in unnoticed, but Bang's going to turn up relatively late. And at this point in the game, the flank from the level three Vladimir is not something that you're going to respect. And they are going to be able to lock down this Ocean Drake now. A bit of extra regen for everyone across the board is going to mean so much. You mentioned pushing aggressively on the side of Deft and Mata. They can do so even more with the availability of more feathers and more options from the KT bottom lane. Just impressive when top laner sense gets you so much. The amount of time they wasted from blank there was pretty disgusting, to be honest, and they got the Drake out of it as well. So, big win there for KT Rolster early in game number two. Yeah. Wave priority is going to go over to SKT here, and remember, they have teleport advantage as well. So, Bang will be able to get himself some items, get back into the lane. And Deft could be in a little bit of trouble. Smab has gone for the press the attack for the first time, so it seems like not AP cannon. Going to be on hit cannon this time against expectations mid lane. Yeah, well, Faker looking for score on UCAL here, getting some damage down, but I don't know whether he's going to die just yet. 100 health left on the Gallio, and Blank turns up just in time. A lot of damage put in, loads of people roaming through the mid lane. There's efforts there. Yeah, Marta going to do the same thing, though, as score pokes his head back around. This is. Two versus three at the moment in this river as Yukal was going back to base. We'll have teleport to get back into this lane. Decides to deal with the minion wave first. KT still trade up. The bone skewer misses. Full disengage from SKT as effort was. One level behind at the time, and that does mean that Scuttle Crab will go the way of KT Ross. Looks like Death will be going towards a uh, Storm Razor as another bone skewer is going to go wide from effort. Needs to get his eye in on his signature pick in the pike. Mata is top 10, solo, kill, solo queue still. Rank eight, I believe, under the Luka Modric ID. Funny think, one, yep. he was the MVP of the World Cup, and of course Mata the MVP of Worlds four years ago. Named himself after one Mata, the Manchester United player, and the time Chelsea player is bot lane. Definitely. A little bit of yakety sax. Yeah, the battle dance. We'll be able to get Mata out of there. Certainly as a football fan. Uh, K SKT just clearing out waves, actually staying ahead as this fresh minion wave is going to crash. The awkward part of explaining that story is technically it's one matter. That's why there was a time where people were like, why don't you call them matter? And I'm like, because we always called them matter. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to keep calling them matter. That's we will. That's how that's going to work as he does manage to get the pool out of bang. But uh, ain't nothing much more than that. Predator was invested earlier on. Bang teleported back in with some Lucidity Boots picked up. Dark Seal as well, just to give those potions some added value. Just an early shopping thing that happens there. It makes perfect sense. Didn't have enough gold for an amp term, you'd imagine. Smab confirming he's going for the AD build, but the press the attack already told us about that. Yep. Build Draw to Cutlass is going to be his first item of choice, as you noted. So Blade of the Ruin King coming in relatively soon. Unless it's a hybrid cannon, Papa Smithy, what do you reckon? I've seen it once. I don't think we're going to see it here. I hope not, because uh, it's not very good. I used to think that it was good, and it wasn't. Zephyr taking a fair bit of damage from Marta. Gleaming Quill not exactly going to offer the most. KT just hold this wave here. Good position for the Zyra Khan. Not going to get ganked by anyone, just happily farming, trying to get Zyra into a good position when this mid-game rolls around. But the happy farming for the Vladimir is going better than expected. Only two CS behind, very good CS numbers for Bang, and what can be a tricky laning phase. He has teleport, so I imagine he's had access to a couple more minions than Deft, who's of course had to go for a true shot when cleansed this game. Doesn't have that same flexibility to hit lane as Yukon Score, really enjoying playing around this top side of the jungle.
Yeah, Blank gonna poke his head in here, but a whole host of vision available for SKT top side of the map. Smite battle. Yeah, Scott not gonna be able to get it. Uh -oh. Blank steals away the Rift Scuttler. Score's tilted now. Is that going to affect how this game is going to go? I wonder as another Bone Skewer goes wide. Marta jumps onto that Blood Pool and Bang decides that it's time to go. Hemoplague onto two members as Effort takes so much damage. We'll need to eat up all of that Grey Health by getting out of the vision range of KT. Bang first to level six. That's why he uses the ultimate there to try to get a health advantage. Galio was nowhere near the Scuttle and Malzahar was still in mid lane. So unfortunately, Score trusted in his smite. Did not work out. Do lose that scuttle. Yeah. Yukal getting into a decent position now as far as clearing out waves, and you can see that has evened out the farm here in this lane. These Predator zoning comes proto down again. predators is pretty funny. Yeah. We did see a zoning sanguine pool uh, the other day, so that was pretty cool. Actually, that was today. That was in our earlier series by Viper. Oh. Our bang. Zoning Predator. Always feels a while ago when the Telecom Warriors, the second series. Mm. It's always must watch League of Legends. Bang again, doing very well CS wise here, which Deft and Mata wouldn't have acted in. There's even been some push from the Vladimir in this lane. A lot of people walk up. Control Ward sticking for SKT. They've actually got the Galio wants to roam bot lane. Double Control Wards to give him the unseen roam timings down as well. So I feel like KT have. Let their vision slip quite a lot right now. They're trying to make plays across the map that SKT are pretty aware of. Well, KT right now looking to try and at least change that one. Getting some of their vision available. There's an opportunity for Def to get ganked here, but the Rakan makes his way back into the lane. Def is going to continue just pummeling these minions one after the other. This game feels like... It's on a bit of a time of probably for SKT as KT's composition looks like late game is where they're aiming for. And SKT's team fight still will be something that's so difficult for KT to deal with. I just look at a marksman and think, is this now the opportunity for KT to not get cheese barroned and draw out the game for them to have a few items? And walks up, he's gonna all in. Yeah, ult does come down. He wants to get another stun, but won't get it. Diminishing returns on that one and Carl will make his way out. No flash comes out, and there's no slicing Maelstrom now for the cannon. Carl oh, does have the magic damage shield that you can pick up. That budget hex drinker from the sorcery tree. Yeah. So not going to go down in one pop. And to your point about where the games are going, should be worth noting that AD cannon and just Malzahar against a team comp like this are very unreliable team fighters. So I don't want to put too much faith in KT in terms of those two picks. There is only one marksman on the rift, so I can understand the optimism around Deft, but yeah, I do feel like SKT against a pretty squishy comp like this do have plenty of mid to late game team fight options. So I don't think the reliability of KT's comp is as high as some of our other marksman versus no marksman games may have indicated. Yeah, you're right. Maybe the lack of frontline could be a problem here. We'll see whether SKT then can just wait this one out as best they can. Faker on the Galio, always something that you can put your money on and feel pretty comfortable with. That was where SKT were able to get all of their success overseas. Effect scouting things out. And you have to remember that he's back on his pike as well. Pick that has been fantastic for him, even if so far this game, the Bone Skewers have certainly been going wide. Again, this game's gone way better than expected for SKT in the early game. Huge amount of farm on Bang. He's going to ult here. Yeah, he will have to use that Feather Storm. It's going to be a kill. He looks for Effort, and that's just going to be easy. They lock it down. X marks the spot, and that's even full gold going to Effort as well. Just a straight up mistake in the lane from Deft. Shouldn't be making those mistakes. 2v2 kill to Bang and Effort. Almost a solo, but even better because Effort will get the full gold thanks to that ultimate. X marks the spot. As we go look over the replay here. Unfortunately, Fang is one level up. He doesn't even have Protobelt at this point. Just Predators at Deft. He's too far up the lane. Could have used his ultimate earlier, but probably understood there'd be a follow flash, whatever he did. It showed the blue, even though Efforts is the 0 yeah. zero, 0 And he picked up the coins there as well. Huh. So that's it's just weird. the X came down. Uh, like, I think as it gets casted, even if you don't get the thing, if they die On in the X. the X, then you still get the gold. Isn't that an assist, though? Well, I think it should be, but uh, it's not. 
That's weird. He definitely did get the money, though. And it was the bigger portrait. This is what I. I know, I know. That's what yeah. I saw. And yet, yeah. it says zero, zero, zero. So, oh, well. I don't know. A Papa Smithy issue. We should pause for this. <laughs> Can we pause for the Papa Smithy issue? Well, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Just, just continue. Let's let's uh. Remember, let's no tools we used except for ultimates. So, Flash and Clan still up for death, as we do see multiple members in the bot lane. Yep. Martha down here now to protect his AD carry, but Blank's here as well as Effort misses another Bone Skewer. May as well just not put any more points into it, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, Yukal does still have his shield. Not anymore. It does mean that SKT are going to back away. Another Rift Scuttle should come in here. Okay. There's the quickness. Marta finds three charms as Blank not taking any damage. From that ultimate from Yukal, he gets his way out, but is it going to be far enough? Winds of War come forward, KT falling like dominoes. They ignore Yukal, give that kill over to Tal because they want to kill Deft and Marta yet again. The blade call is good and Deft creates a lot of distance, but X marks the spot and the KT-80 carry now under a turret with no ultimate is going to fall and Tal even wants more. Marta will have a lot of ability to get out. The grand entrance was there and therefore the dive is not going to continue, but that's a zero. 0 to 0 depth now. It's a really bad engage time from Mata. That was another one of those engages we saw from Wolf early in the season of, I could get them all, I'm going to initiate. But tone deaf to where the game was at. They weren't going to have the ability to rotate some might to straight up die. Bang doesn't have his ultimate. Sorry, his uh, flash available, so couldn't get an extra Q after that. Well, let's watch the replay and consider what happens here. Kennen does have his teleport. Mata goes in. Zoom. Remember that Death got a bad back timing after dying. Doesn't have Storm Razor. They also are against a Galio comp that can control space better than they can. So just they were priced in to lose this team fight. They don't have the items to make this play. And unfortunately, they're collapsed on. Tal goes in. Cannon, of course, cancels teleport. Knows that AD Cannon is not going to change the fight. And even an extra kill on the chase here for SKT. You need to choose your timings. That was not the time for KT Rolster. It wasn't. And also, the Nethergrass target was not the one that they wanted either. Onto Blank when Effort was right there sharing pixels with him was a very odd choice. I feel like getting him out of the fight was certainly an option. However, I guess he had to because the explosive cast would have just knocked him immediately out of it. Blank could do anything. Just a worry here for KT. And Marta, he's done this before, where he decides he wants fights that the rest of KT certainly don't want. Deft, he has his Storm Razor. That's good news. However, his scoreline not make any KT fans feel very good. That's the timing also. He has a Storm Razor after a lot of decisions have been made in this game. Can't use it to double down on the lane control. And Marta's not even with him at this present moment. Map will continue to push in. He's done a lot of damage to the turret, but I don't even think he's even going to get the first blood turret or the first brick. Bang, just zoning away death yep. with the Predator. Predator comes in yet again. Control Ward's going to spot Marta out. I believe they saw that Score was on the bottom side as well, so SKT not biting off more than they can chew. 2,000 plus gold lead now for SKT, and KT well and truly looking down the barrel of a 0 2 Telecom War after the 1 and 2 Telecom War from earlier in the season. And where you would have thought this match would have been won would have been in the bot lane. Even though Efforts had some good games, it hasn't been 2v2 laning for the side of SKT. It's been more Efforts roams that have been complemented, whereas Deft and Marta have been once again fantastic laners in the summer season, and yet 2v2 kill in the bot lane onto Deft, and Deft and Marta losing their turret first in a good matchup for the Zyra Khan. Bang also looking brilliant on the Vladimir, understanding his damage windows. We saw over at Rift Rivals, his Vlad looked brilliant. Once again, going to continue, of course, effort. Very good Pike player as well, and feels like the awesome dudes are enough to trump the lovers duo. Bottom side of the map as well, but of course, KT making some mistakes in the laning phase. So going on a little bit of an adventure in the jungle. The two-man taunt comes in as effort. Good positioning. Tal lands the boomerang as Marta will have to get out with the Q. KT successfully steal a Gromp. Don't get much more. KT not having answers to blind picks from SKT. First pick Galio. They went for the Malzahar. Again, a decent matchup, but not being converted on. Yep. Seeing Smab just disengage. There's wow, another Predator. Is, uh, oh boy, there's a lot of people coming. He certainly is a Predator here towards the top side. Score gets a good pillar down, but ba Bang still in range of Smeb. We get the Guardian Shield as well as the Battle Dance, and that means that there's just a bit of health back from that Hemo Plague, but no more cannon 
in this lane, and SKT with complete priority. And back to the draft again. Vlad was taken very early, only after Rakan was locked in, and yet they went Zaya Rakan and couldn't convert that either. You need to get things on the red side. That's where you get options. Aren't really used his effort. Ah, uh, just steals the red buff. Okay. Score didn't That's have a bone obscure. He wasn't going to miss. <laughs> that's true. Get them uh, very short range ones. That, that's that's the best option. Is Blank just being annoying? Clears out of control ward very easily and bang once again. Solo local gold on turret number two. Got it on turret number one. It's a 4,000 gold lead and it's a large portion on the Vladimir as well, given that global gold that they have. Deft is going to be able to steal one here on the bottom side of the map, but Shelly's going to go down as well. Tempo stays in the hands of SKT. 4,000 gold lead for a team that at two items on the Vladimir and the Galio are going to be very reliable about what they do, and that is Initiate and Wombo onto Very squishy members on the side of KT, so a very meaningful gold lead at this point in the game. SKT just now want to continue to play around their map control to control wards around the Rift Herald. Uh, still present on the map. We'll see where Gragas wants to use that one. Easy turret would be the mid lane. Yeah. That is where SKT are looking. Easy turret for KT would certainly be the top side of the map. A few pings coming out from SKT as they've got a wave. It is, I believe, pushing forward for KT as well, if I'm uh, counting some of these dots in my head. SKT have just had great positioning at the moment, and honestly, with this composition that they have available to them, they can start a fight whenever they want with whoever they want, and Faker can just jump on them if they get into trouble. Def just had to delay his build with a Hex Drinker, not to be popped by the Galio and the Vladimir combo. Yeah, still has the brown bags as well, unable to finish his Berserker's Greaves off. See whether that's a zeal that he wants, or whether those Zerkers will come in when he gets his next 500 gold to go back with. Mentioned a couple of times tonight, but desperately want that 30% critical strike from the first completed zeal item to yeah. fully convert the Storm Razor. Was hotfix buffed on patch 813. But this is the worry. Bang has his two items. They got a lot of ball carriers on their side. They're not worried about the Malzar. Pike's actually got the QSS already. The moment that SKT decide they want to fight, it's going to be hard to uh, rescind the invitation. Also might just be decided by Shelly here as there's a Bone Skewer landing as well. Score's gonna get taunted back and there's all of the CC! The troll will flash away, Subjugate keeping him alive. Hemo Plague onto death may not be as good with the Hex Drinker available. They still get the turret, but they don't manage to get the kills after all of the focus onto the Trundle. They get the objective they're looking for. It's only ultimates use no summoners and they back away. So still, SKT will be happy. Could have been more, but no need to be greedy. AT have very little map control. Again, we're in a scenario where someone has picked on hit cannon for lane. Three turrets have gone down. And will you ever get the lane assignment that you originally assigned yourself to? You may not see cannon meaningfully laning against the NAR for the majority of this game. Continues to build for lane with the wit's end, I imagine, as a second item. Could also be rage blade, I guess. Yeah, I could go for it if you would like to. Feels like whatever item he goes to may or may not be just completely Irrelevant in this game. SKT push up vision. Gonna put down their control wards, and if you start face checking with these squishies on the KT side, you're gonna know about it. Yep. I also really like what Tile's done here. He's sort of got done half and half laning and team fighting with Frozen Mallet coming in as item number two. Oh, come on, it's pretty much the laning choice if you're gonna be building the NAR. Yeah. What would you like to what would be less lane? Rage Blade you're not gonna build against Ken, because then you actually die. Yeah, well like Blade of the Ruin King's pretty laney, you know? Yes, to take away all that beefy AD cannon. I, I more just thought just use it to slow the damn guy down. I just think this is the very, very standard itemization, right? When oh, Gnar yeah, was yeah. meta, it was uh, a lot of frozen mallets and black cleavers. Just feels like the old Gnar build rather than the new one that we've been seeing mostly. But like you say, it's been because he's been picked into Mondo. All right, KT. Finding a way back into this game is looking tricky. You know, they really need Def to get his zeal item, and that's uh, a ways away, like you mentioned, Berserker Greaves, and also the zeal item completion, very important. If you do find a turret, gold lead isn't insurmountable because of the timing and the texture of the comp they're against. Very, very relevant. KT have two, have paid the tax on two members of the QSS, and even if you put that together, they are still comfortably ahead in the gold lead. Is SKT? And Yukal's building a lot of damage to start this one off as well. The Oblivion Orb now just picks up the uh, needlessly large rod. 
already has his Luton's Echo available to him. Just really grasping for some relevance in these mid-game fights of KT. Finally, a back will come down for Deft. We'll see what he can actually afford as he goes home. Marta decides not to go home with him. That is the zeal that you were talking about. He's going to forego Berserker's Greaves on this back. At the end of the day, Stormraiser Zaya is a burst champion. It's all about the first auto, also the Q and E. Getting everything going. SKT are yeah. going to commit to this. They are going to be able to take away the red buff, and can they actually get rid of Score as well? Hero's entrance comes down. It's a good pillar placement, and once again, Score is knocked back in. However, not taken down. Half the health bar on the trundle. We've got the roam up here from the Nar, but he's just looking at that third Cloud Drake that SKT now have available to them. Not good execution there from SKT. They seem surprised that the Hero's entrance was even invested. No one was in position behind the action in order to set up a pincer onto the, the uh, Trundle, so he was able to live despite having no flash. I understand why they made the play. Trundle, no flash, should be easy to come down. They weren't really setting up aggressively enough to fully use the Galio ult. Yeah, well, now the teleport play is going to come in from KT. Looking for Faker, he can't flash to get out as Yukal doesn't find his R button quickly enough, and Faker will just walk back to lane. Looks like he wanted to flash ER and wasn't able to pull it off, so a follow flash over the wall. Goodbye, Faker. Says you, Carl, wistfully. Yeah. That's just a flash for free as well. I mean, Faker did have to trade his own, but he was the one getting severely ganked. Teleport was invested as well. KT seemed to be throwing a lot in the kitchen sink at SKT. And now we're going to have a team fight where Faker can just ult, and sadly the Malzahar will not have flash. So that's probably going to be bad. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, the, the flash is not quite as important when you're a big beefy Galio, despite the fact that he does a fair bit of damage. But once again, he's going to find himself between a rock and a hard place. And finally, that ultimate is going to be available. Maybe a bit of an error from the man in the mid lane for SKT. And he does go down. Tile split pushing on the bottom side. But KT finally gets some momentum. Do wonder why he thought he was free to make that play. They had no vision at all. So that was uh, questionable by the great man. There is certainly some skepticism available here as there's a teleport available for Tal, but now KT, they're on the Baron. Got a fair bit of Baron damage and a lot of Baron safety given the Malzahar. They don't have Smite on score, remember that. Well, SKT are going to want to fight for this one. Yeah, as the good. tower falls down, now the teleport is invested in. It's a good Narbar from Tal as well as KT. Now want to start off this fight. Fake is still dead and can teleport in if they want to. Mata is going to go down first. Sex marks the spot from Effort. The flash comes out as the Zai is going to fall. It's a double kill though as finally Smep goes in, but it's not the AP cannon. And Tal's just launching around the battlefield. Def gets one with a blade caller. And finally Faker gets in. Blank is going to flash to get his way out. Just as Punch beats Smep to death as now Yukal needs to run for the hills. Blank wants to find Deft. I'm not sure whether they have the vision of him they have as three. he's behind enemy lines. They have three Cloud Drakes. They can't be kited here. Well, Deft is going to get taunted, and he's well and truly dead. Faker cleans up for SKT, and KT don't get the Baron. Four for three overall. KT were always looking for the turn because Score did not have his smite, and the enemy smite was going to be there. This fight looks so, so close. Vladimir is interrupted and actually doesn't get a lot of value at the start. So they will put down the Hemo Plague in a great spot. Two kills answered by two. You thought maybe Smep would clean this up because he does have the auto attacks and the exhaust not as strong against the on-hit cannon. Right at the end, though, Faker is able to clean it up. Problem here, like we mentioned, there is, of course, the access to the three Cloud Drakes. They work in combat, and thus Deft cannot fully disengage. Yeah, Faker gives up on trying to chase down the Malzahar and decides that Zyre is the more priority target. Finally, that uh, Malzahar does have his pretty cool hat. And a BF sword was picked up by Deft as he got two kills and an assist in that last fight. We're looking for good news for KT. They did line their pockets just a little bit. However, K SKT still in absolute control. You got a Void Staff now augmenting the other two items that Bang had already picked up this game. And yes, Deft did a lot of damage in the last team fight, but that was a 4v5 SKT without their mid lane. It was definitely one of the best case scenarios for KT, and they were able to only trade unevenly. SKT still got more kills through all of that. So we'll see how the next time things go. You'd imagine Vladimir will have better access to the back line than he did. Got interrupted by Marta very severely in the previous fight. Now has Void Star, so a lot of threat onto all the members of KT Rolster.
Yeah. If there wasn't already, Pop Smithy. His QSS is being completed by Tal as well. He wants to be frontlining on this NAR. Doesn't want Yukal to have an easy answer to stop him from being annoying. I think you kind of look at this game and say, if not for a Malzahar pick, how did KT win? So QSS becomes more and more of a priced in choice than it always is against the suppression. Yep. Yukal's on the bottom side of the map, has teleport in order to get himself up top as well to stave off SKT, who, was, who were pushing up there. 6,000 and a half gold now. The separation between SKT and KT. KT desperate to hold on to get to a game three at least and stop this 0-2 nightmare from plaguing them. Would be six and five after this game if they were to lose. SKT will move up to five and six, so not much to split in the two teams in the telecom war. Yeah, won't quite get SKT into playoffs, but making a run is what the SKT fans expect. Able to make a run to fourth in spring season. Still, SKT go to the side lanes. They can afford to push now pretty easily if Vladimir or the NAR are involved, as they have the QSS. And Malzahar hanging back, as we can see. Yukal trying to find some relevance this game, to being soundly beaten by Faker in game number one. Mm -hmm. And Asmev just wants as many recurve boat items as he can possibly find. Going to get his third after that wit's end, like you were talking about earlier, has been completed. Okay, SKT, can you make a play around this Baron Pit to try and put this game to rest? Or are you going to give KT some more time to try and find a way back into this game? Yes, we understand that there isn't a lot that KT have to look forward to as far as late game, but as long as they're here, they're in it. 6,000 is not enough gold to separate these two teams and guarantee victory for SKT. Deep breaths here. Remember that just like the game that SKT had drag out on them, they have very low Baron damage this game, SKT. So they have great engage, but not the best Siege or Baron damage. And the cannon does answer the Gnar at every moment, so they can't really fall one split either. So it's very important that SKT get the team fight. That usually requires deep vision, that as you can see, KT's been pretty dogged in defending. So this is the sort of game, once again, that maybe we'll have to extend till the Elder Dragon Throws a monkey wrench in the works when it comes to where you defend. It's very easy for KT to defend one objective. Defending two, that's something that's much harder. Well, speaking of that older Drake, it will be the next one to come up as SKT are going to grab their Ocean Drake. KT managed to get the first one, but other than that, hasn't been very many options for them. As this map has belonged to SKT. They're going to be running real fast. They'll have a whole bunch of extra regen, and damn, that older Drake is going to be one hell of a beast if it lands into the hands of SKT. Even the self-slow on the Galio W is not going to be enough to stop the buffed-up Cloud Drake on oh, these yeah. members. He'll be running real fast. He's def desperately Whoa. wants to find... Whoa! That's a lot of Gathering Storm. Whoa! Triple? Really? I wasn't expecting that from uh, SKT's side, but there we go. What does it mean to take Gathering Storm into the Cannon matchup as not? That's cool. I mean, it seemed to have worked, I guess. You know, he's winning in farm. He's 2 on 2 Probably has not a lot to do with the uh, 1v1 laning matchup. However, still, have to hand it to Tal. He's had a pretty good series so far. I now want to shake his hand after the game, win or loss. But yeah, you took Gathering Storm into yeah. a cannon. Nicely done. Well, effort. Still holding on to his dash. Using it to clear out vision. A stun there, but QSS out. One QSS down to the side of SKT. Yep, and now he's not going to be able to play as far forward. SKT not going to be able to dominate this vision game as much as there's another Bone Skewer, but not going to get Marta back through the wall. Meaning that SKT aren't going to be able to lock down any kills. Deft unable to get himself the big chicken. There is a Rage Blade on Smeb, so he now does a lot of damage and has a huge amount of attack speed. Now waiting on the bottom side because he just wants to split. This is not a team fight build. It's a further dunk on the NAR build by doubling down on your on hits with the Phantom hit. Going to come out with so much attack speed out of his uh, yeah. lightning rush as well. Nice burst of attack speed there. SKT can actually start the Baron. KT understandably going to be slow to check it because the enemy team has low Baron damage. But how long can you wait, KT, if it's another 5 to 10 seconds? It might be too long. Yeah, there are not very many 
blue trinkets on this KT roster, and they have been used up as well. Vision now going to come in as one finally comes down, and score should be in range. This is going to be a true 50-50 as they are going to start the team fight instead. SKT He's trying to get over and score! Steals the Baron! It's a big Gnar in the back line as Hero's entrance is going to get Faker down. Mata is going to be the one to fall. Score surely going to go down, but he goes down a Hero for KT Rolster. Not often he is the one doing the stealing, but this time he pickpockets SKT. Should have been there, Baron, but it goes down. The risk of taking it with a slow Baron team. Able to do damage to force it into range. Stolen away. Ken's going to back off. They take a couple of losses, but still worth it for the Baron. Yep, all the more time now for KT to hold on to their base and try and get Deft that Infinity Edge that he so wants. Got a whole bunch of items on UCAL as well. Oblivion Orbs just still sitting there as he's got his cool hat, his fancy wand, his Luton's Echo as well. KT trying to get themselves into a relevant position, but this is only going to buy time. SKT still terrifying in any teamfight scenario. Very slow Baron here. They stopped DPSing at 2,500, but then Death pushes damage over the wall and Score says, thank you very much, 56 health, I'll take that. He's able to pick it up, I believe, yeah. Both smites were used in that fight. On the back of it, there were some kills to be cleaned up on effort getting the ultimate off in that one as well. Two kills for a Baron. Given how far behind KT were in full defense, you'll take it. Oh, hell yeah, you will. Now Deft, he has a stopwatch and an infinity edge as he went back to base and finally had the thousand gold to complete that recipe. So three items Aya, nothing to scoff at. You fully disengage the Galio, and who knows what could happen if Deft is able to outplay. Well, Mata, they're looking for Blank as he does get the flash body slam to make his way out. Is a big engage cooldown there in the flash on the Gragas. The KT don't have to worry about now as they use the Baron buff to push up these minions in the mid lane. Anything to make Death's life a bit safer is good as here we go. Oh, throws the barrel in. Death doesn't actually use the ult on this one though as Marta's going to dash around. Score is going to go golden, but now he's at the mercy of SKT as Tal dives forward, gets the wallet, bunches him into the wall as they pick up the kill with the death from below, but now Smash wants to find more. Good God, the damage from this Rage Blade as they tear them apart. Can they actually find more death from below kills? No, they won't. As it's the Malzahar that picks that one up as KT, they find four out of nowhere. KT actually able to wombo them down, take them down in the corridor. Death so clean on not using his ultimate early means they actually have a turnaround. How much can KT get in a similar scenario? SKT won game one. They have got so much damage in these auto attacks. Remember, Smeb hits like a truck and so damn often. And Deft as well, he's a true marksman as they'll take down this inhibitor in the mid lane. It feels like we're going to a game number three, Papa Smithy, as KT turn this match on its head. Bang trying his best, but I don't think he can do it. Doesn't have the ultimate, not enough time on the respawns. KT Rolster, yep. just need to finish off the Nexus. No Hemo Plague there as Marta's going to be the sacrificial lamb. Can Effort actually find it here as Death flashes over, finishes off the Nexus, and KT bring us to game three. The steal from score is what they need to get back into this game because they had no way to get anywhere near the pit. They were so far behind in terms of control. But if you don't have the ability to take down the Baron fast, you're stalled out, you're stalled out. One steal later, a team fight and a win for KT Rolster. Oh, just ridiculous. Completely against the script for that game, for the position that they were at that particular moment. It was a team fight that they opted in for. And KT managed to roll right over the top. Somehow, Smeb made on hit Cannon look like a team fight champion. Got in there, stunned up the members of SKT, and you can see they're a bit stunned right now in the booth themselves. There's that old adage of we were winning till we weren't. That does apply to SKT yeah. in this game. They were in full control, KT. Had so many members behind. Remember, 0-2-0 zero, zero was yeah. deft very early into this game. Bemused looks on the side of SK Telecom T1. They know they were pickpocketed. They know it should have been a 2-0. They just looked so good for the majority of that game. Last time around, it was KT in that position. But now, with momentum moving into game number three, can KT find the 2-1? Or is it going to be once again SKT back on the other side of the rift? You know what, it will be Atlas. It's going to be high drama. How could the telecom war oh, yeah. be anything but high drama? SKT so close to once again putting them only one win away from the top five. 
come in four and six, wanting to jump up to the five and six number. Damage from Deft, much higher than you would expect and quite backloaded after what was a pretty weak early game. And KT won that game with a gold deficit as well. Still unable to overcome SKT despite rolling through so many turrets in order to take that game down. They won that last game-winning fight down 7,000 plus gold and still hadn't really spent since uh, the Baron had fallen. Pretty sure not all members had actually gone back home. Just so huge that KT were able to turn it around at that moment. I saw some people walking out, I guess, expecting it to be a 2-0. I think the KT fans need to call their friends, say, get back here. Yeah. We got another game going. We do. And it's what we expected from the Telecom War. Thank you so much, KT, for finding the last team fight because now it all comes down to this. Guys, one last break, and then we'll have the conclusion of the Telecom War.